If you're wondering why our clapperboard says Blue Peter all over it, it's because Asta, the arts charity, has got quite a large uh, memorabilia department and someone kindly um, threw this at me and said, Phil, why don't you use that? So that's why we've got Blue Peter written all over um, our, I hope you can see that, um, our clapperboard, okay? So here we are. So there's some things you need to understand. One thing, we have to get the coloration right, but we also have to get the texture right. I used a little bit of uh, wheat flour uh, in the paint just to thicken it up a little bit, uh, as Rembrandt used to do, uh, and he was quite famous for doing that. So that thickens it up quite a lot. Okay, so uh, the paint is on there, the texture I, I, I think is about right, but there's a further thing we need to get on top of, and that is the sheen of it. Um, and I think we need a little bit more of a gloss on there. It may be um, that our, our artist, Mr. Serres, um, put a little bit of sheen in his oil, because it, it's, it's a very shiny painting, despite the fact I took a good deal of the varnish off. So I'm just going to add a little bit of sheen there, okay? Right, so to give the gloss I'm using stand oil, okay? It's linseed stand oil, it's the shiniest product we can get hold of, but I must put it on very, very sparingly, or it'll outshine anything else on the painting uh, and ruin the work, okay? So I'm going to put a little bit of stand oil on, but very, very sparingly indeed, okay? There we go. I've got a very tiny brush as well, it's like a double O brush, okay? So I'm going to put a little bit of stand oil on and just get some shiny peaks on this textured foliage, okay? Just to highlight some of the peaks is what I'm trying to achieve. Okay. That might do it. I don't want to overdo this at all. There's a second area here that just needs lifting a little tiny bit in its sheen, okay? Well, there's a little bit of foliage down here. So I'm just dotting on a little bit of this stand oil to highlight some of the, the foliage, okay? Like I say, I can always add more, so don't be too, too generous with it straight away, okay? And I think that's all I need to do. Nothing else requires any work. Okay. So, I'll let that dry. Right, okay, so it's 24 hours later and I'm still trying to get the sheen up a little bit on my, my repair work. Um, so I'm using a, an acrylic varnish which is water-based and I'm using that so it doesn't interfere or soften uh, my painting that I've done before which of course is oil-based okay so I'm just going to put a little bit of acrylic varnish on here uh, in an effort to try and get the sheen up a little bit the surface sheen okay and I'm literally just doing the areas that I've patched up because they're lacking behind the main painting in terms of sheen. Okay. There's only three areas that I'm actually needing to concentrate on, all of which are foliage. Okay, there's just one down here. They're all foliage. Brilliant, okay. I'll let that dry for a few hours. Right, it's two days later. The linseed stand oil, which I highlighted on some of this new work, is now um, set, which is great. It's now gone hard, okay. Uh, next thing to do is just Reef the sunlight or any light you've got across your work. Make sure that um, that there's no dull patches. And I, I see we really could do with a little bit more sheen on this area here. Also use a torch if necessary. 
you get you get an idea of the reflection all over the painting okay I can see the torch head quite clearly and the reflection um, take it to your new work yeah and it really could do with a little bit more sheen uh, so I'll put a little bit more varnish on that okay anywhere else while I'm at it yeah probably lacking a bit of sheen down here uh, and around this area here so I'll, I'll get in and do that right so this is acrylic varnish I wouldn't want it to uh, soften or compromise any of the work which I've done in oils so this is water based and it shouldn't shouldn't um, affect it at all. Now, nice little bit of sunshine coming into the room so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just localising uh, onto some of this matte area here, okay? Don't need to overdo it because I've got to give it a, uh, um, the whole painting a, a coat anyway. I'm aware of that. When the sun's shining, it's a really good way of, of seeing um, the re reflective uh, qualities of the work, okay? A little bit there. Beautiful, okay. Okay, well I think we've got it more or less where we want it. This is a couple of hours later now. Everything seems to have dried, uh, so I'm going to give it a little dust off before I give the whole painting uh, a last coat. I hope it's the last coat anyway of uh, varnish, okay? So a quick dust off there. What I'm trying to remove is any hairs or dust that floated on there or brush hairs. They seem to get everywhere. And once you've um, put your varnish on, of course, you're already stuck with them. So that's it, literally stuck with them. Right, okay, I think that's okay. Right, a bit of good housekeeping here. Before we get varnish all over the table. Nice and quickly. Try and minimise any bubbles, although they, they do normally go away on their own accord. And make sure it's a nice thorough coating. Okay. Make sure any bubbles disappear and make sure nowhere is missed. Okay. I've got a little time, fortunately even acrylic varnish doesn't go off immediately. Okay. Right, I don't want to be dragging over anything further, I don't think. So Right, so here we are, 24 hours later. I've put this painting in the darkest place because there's quite a bit of uh, light bounce coming off it. And if you can see um, where most of the repair work's been done, uh, I can't actually find it. Up here and down here, uh, I think we've got it all where we want it. I think we've got the colours where we want them. I think we've got the texture more or less correct. And I think we've got the sheen about right as well. So that's the end of module 9. Thanks for watching.